I'm going to start with Bobby's boy, uh, Vucevic. Part of that report was that it's going to be a massive haul. Now, we've been debating on all day, Bobby, what that actually entails. But first, this you turned on this guy, meaning turned towards this guy yeah. as your guy. Tell us why. Tell us what you think, what you'd be willing to give up here for the Celtics to get it done. So I was never the biggest fan of him. I, I, and the Celtics were previously interested in him during that Kemba Walker offseason. They yep. were hot on him because they had the max cap space after Kyrie and Horford left. Could have filled him down the middle. So there's a connection there. Obviously, Kemba came along and grabbed that. But now you have the chance to have four all-stars on the team if Kemba And people hated that, that name back then. They hated it. Yeah, and I still don't love it now, but I think context is everything. You don't have cap space forever now. There's only so many ways you can improve into the future. So why not grab the best player available? And I think out of all the options we're going to talk about today, this guy's an all-star. He pushes 30 points a game on many nights. A dominant rebounder, probably one of the best rebounders in basketball this year. Defense. We'll see. I think it's all situational, but he's kind of a disaster down there in Orlando defensively. That could change in Boston. And the three-point shot. By zone, he's the best three-point shooter above the break in basketball this year. So that's perfect in Boston's pick-and-pop offense. He'd get open shots above the arc all day there. He can post up. He's seven feet. I know people will love that. He's a real big. (laughs) So... He'd just give them a bunch of different options and outlets for offense and size that they don't have right now. And this is what I love about it. And you're going to love this too, John. If they can find a way to clear Tice in a potential deal here, clear Thompson in a deal here, and you're left with Robin Vucevic. See, you know, that's the dream. Yeah. That's the dream. So look at it this way, though. If you're the other team coming back, you don't want to take on Thompson or Tice. So you know Rob is automatic. Certainly if you're going – um, to go big, you know, to go get somebody else's big. I don't see any world in which you make a trade, really any trade at this point, and Rob Williams is still a Celtic. So anybody at home saying, do it, do it, do it, I think has to get used to kind of giving up on their binky, which is Rob Williams, which is going to be hard for a lot of Celtics fans to be able to live with that. So I said no on it. Where are you? On Williams? That's the thing is like, this is again, this is where we started the season, right? Uh, in terms of, uh, um, oops, sorry. In terms of the um, the what they didn't make a trade. The Celtics, as constituted, didn't have any assets beyond draft picks theoretically because uh, there's no none of the young players are performing. But if they started to perform, then we'd be reluctant to get rid of them. And so now that Rob Williams is starting to flash, and people are thinking, wow. Is this a franchise cornerstone sort of player? Now it's much harder to part with. But if you're another team and you're looking at Pritchard, Neesmith, Romeo, and Rob, who and and who's the first one you're asking for? You're going to ask for Rob, right? Yeah, and you're right. I, I don't see him surviving any trade because every team not only wants picks, they want they want players like that. They want a player who might be something way more than that in a year or two. And the only person on this team that screams that is Rob. Yeah, and you're right. It's a good thing, frankly. We, we didn't think anybody on this roster was tradable and valuable coming into this year. I've argued that Tice is, but he's certainly less than Rob. And then you talk about P- Pritchard. He's probably going to be, at some point in the future, a valuable asset as well. So they're building those, which is good. That's what they needed to do in the first quarter, second quarter of the season this year, is try to play young guys enough where they were going to be enticing his trade options and i think anybody on the orlando side right now would look at rob and say that's it that's it right there smart was another guy i've talked to so many different people on the orlando side and smart was thrown out in almost every conversation now our guy keith smith um at celtics blog he's close to the magic and he doesn't view smart as our orlando building block and he's only signed i don't think he is for anyone like that yeah so that's the thing with smart is it doesn't it's not when we've debated Smart or not, it's not debating Smart's value. I just think it's greater to the Celtics. Like Smart's the player that winning teams want and need. And yeah, it wouldn't be bad to kick kick some asses in a team struggling with culture. Absolutely, if you wanted to do that. But when you're talking about what you want back, it's young, it's cheap, it's future. You want max flexibility. Uh, you want to have money when you can spend it. You don't want, even though Smart is totally affordable by today's NBA standards, it's just not a building block sort of piece. He's the type of guy that you bring on to a winning team or a team on the cusp. 
And that's why I don't see him being a real chip in any trade. I think if you give him up, you're going to be worse for it than anything else. And I, I just don't think any team wants that back. Yeah, their need, and we talked about this in the past shows that we've done after games, their need for him right now from a point guard position, defense certainly, shooting, all that stuff, they need in a big way right now. And obviously they would lose something intangible in giving him up. So it's almost a good thing that Orlando wouldn't necessarily want him. So what, yep. what would we be talking about, Rob? So play GM right now. The offer on the table, you've got to make the offer to get Vucevic. What's the most you're willing to part with if you're Danny? So I've come at it from the perspective of the Celtics don't need any picks whatsoever. Like they are just done drafting players. 18 and five years. The, the roster is completely jam-packed with young guys. Just dump them all in the Boston Harbor, as I said. Like, just get them out of here. I would go as many as four for Vucevic just to keep players on board. Maybe even try to keep Rob until that last minute. But if, if it truly came down to haggling time and they wanted Rob, I'd give that up. And if the picks aren't all that enticing, then you probably go to Lankford, Neesmith, those kind of guys. I wouldn't trade Pritchard right now, probably. Like, I wouldn't go that far, but... Again, if it comes down to haggling time and they say Pritchard or nothing here and they're, the other options aren't looking that good for Boston, I still think it's so urgent for them to do something massive with this TPE to parlay it into an all-star player, into a guy that can be with the team for years to come. And Vucevic is signed three years, this year included. It'd be tough to not give up basically anything except short of smart at, at this point for him. Like, they just... They just need to hit this TP out of the park. And I keep telling you guys, don't wait till the off season. Yeah. Like you lose opportunity then. There's other, uh, you know, assets. Draft picks are going to be more concrete. So teams will have advantages if they're higher in the draft. I think you just got to hit this while people are going to be a little uh, passive and the uh, market's going to favor more aggressive teams. So I don't know. I, I guess my initial offer would probably be something like Rob Neesmith. Langford and two first, maybe that that would probably entice them a little bit. Yeah, I uh, you know I'm not ready to move. Uh, I'm not ready to move uh, Pritchard ahead of Neesmith, even though he's clearly shown more right now. I think you're still going the guy with the pedigree who you drafted at 14, who you think is going to be a valuable rotation player versus Pritchard, who's older than Jason Tatum, and right now obviously more. So you would trade Pritchard over Neesmith. Definitely. And, and and not because of what I've seen. Pritchard oh, looks right. like a much more capable player. I'm just rolling the dice that Neesmith – I'm not getting Neesmith as the type of player they envisioned they were getting when they drafted him. That could be proven wrong, and you might know it in less than a year, but way too early. I think Pritchard is what he is and will continue to be roughly this level of player. I don't know that he ascends to too much beyond that. A good bench – point guard, spark plug, confident guy, person you're comfortable running that second team unit. Uh, but that's about it. Neesmith, you're looking hopefully to be someone who can start, maybe be a third wing for you or be an absolute dynamo coming off the bench, scoring 14, 15, 16 a game. That's what you're hoping. So I don't know if that's the case, but I do want to move on because we don't have, I don't, we can't spend all day on this. Uh, we've got live programs on CLNS media throughout the day that we got to rifle through. Oh, yes.